Studying magnets is something we've done since we were little, little tiny kids. So what causes some things to be magnetic and other things to not be? And what can we do with a magnet? Now we already know that some things like plastic and aluminum are not magnetic. You've tried to stick a magnet to an aluminum can and it just doesn't work. So why is plastic and aluminum not magnetic, whereas steel is? What causes magnetism is some sort of moving charged particle. Now, some materials are ferromagnetic. Okay, ferro, F-E, iron, iron magnetic materials. And really what causes them to be magnetic is the fact that they have a whole bunch of unpaired electrons and you may remember from chemistry oops we'll have to put this up but I'm, you don't have to know it I'm just going to show it to you so when we drew the orbital diagram for iron we you don't remember this probably it's okay but you put the electrons into different orbitals and you went up 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 and then you went back and paired them up so you see how iron has these four unpaired electrons here and they're all pointing in the same direction. Well, that shows them spinning. So electrons spin and when they spin, they are moving and when they do that, they create a magnetic field. Now iron is magnetic because it has four unpaired electrons. Something that has five unpaired electrons is more magnetic and having a lot of unpaired electrons will make you more magnetic. Aluminum only has one unpaired electron so that's why aluminum is kind of weak there. And these guys are all spinning in the same direction so they add to each other. And So that's what causes iron to be magnetic is those spinning electrons. Well what causes the earth to be magnetic? Our earth has an iron core. So we have a core that is iron. There's a solid inner core but a liquid outer core. And that liquid outer core is moving around, moving around, moving around and causes the earth to have a magnetic field. Now that magnetic field affects some iron materials. Now if we have a chunk of iron we're going to have some atoms of the iron that have their magnetic fields pointed this direction, some pointed that direction, some pointed this direction, some pointed that direction, so they're all pointing in random directions. You see that? These are called domains. So all the little, little chunks of iron in a piece of metal, they're all spinning kind of in weird directions. And so they kind of cancel each other out, so normal iron isn't really magnetic. But if you put that iron in a magnetic field, you can cause all those electrons to line up and then you can make a permanent bar magnet because they'll kind of squish into place a little bit and they'll rotate a little bit until they're all lined up in the same direction. And then we'll have our north pole side and we will have our south pole side of the magnet. So here would be our magnetic north, and here would be our magnetic south. And these arrows are the direction of the magnetic field. So just like an electric field, the magnetic field always goes from north to south. So it's going to come around the magnet like this. So if we actually looked at the earth, the earth itself acts like a magnet. So the earth with those spinning iron molecules in the core actually create a north and south pole. You might notice on this map that the north is on the bottom and the south is on the top, which is a little bit strange. But if you think about how a compass works, a compass is always going to the north pointing compass is attracted to souths because it's actually a little magnet itself. A compass has a little magnet in it and so the north side of the magnet 
is attracted to the south side of another magnet and so we can see here that if this is pointing north then it must be lining up with the south pole of the earth. We call it magnetic north because our compass points towards the north. For every magnet that you have, if you were to cut this magnet in half, you would basically end up with two magnets. And the north, and that would be the south, and that would be the north, and that would be the south. And if you kept cutting it, you would always have a north pole and a south pole. You always have two poles with a magnet. So there's always a north side and there's always a south side. You can't have two norths or you can't have a north without a south. So one of the effects that we saw already is that we have north and south poles, but magnets also have forces on each other and on other moving charges. So a magnet can actually affect another moving charge or even a charge that's standing stationary and it can make it move. So we already know that magnets, I mean we know this from when we were really little, that if you have a magnet and you have a north end of the magnet and the south end of the magnet that the north is always attracted to the south so these guys are attracted to each other and if we were going to draw the magnetic field lines around these two there would be a strong magnetic field remember fields like a force here in between and then it would go north to south. So the magnetic field lines always form these closed loops. And they always go from north to south, like that. So if I were to put a magnet or a compass out here, so let's take this compass and put it here. It would point in this direction because it is attracted to the south end. So the magnetic field lines, the compass is always going to point in the direction of the magnetic field line. So as we go over here, it's going to turn and it's going to start to point here. And oh look, our magnetic field lines go that way. And then it's going to turn. Where to put it here? Where to put it here? So it's always going to follow those magnetic field lines and see how the south end of the compass is pointing towards the north end of the magnet. We're actually going to do this when we make our own electromagnets. Okay, so you know how we said that a moving charge creates a magnetic field? So if we put a current going through a wire, that's going to create a magnetic field and the direction of the magnetic field is shown by the right hand rule. So if you're going to do the right hand rule, you put your thumb in the direction of the current. So the way the current's going. Remember, your current always goes from positive to negative. Your magnetic field, then, if you were to actually grab that wire, is going to go around the wire. So you're going to have a coiled magnetic field. And on this side, on the top half here, our magnetic field would be coming out of the paper and so the way we show that is with dots so dots mean that the magnetic field is going out and on the other side if you were to coil your fingers all the way around you would see it's going into the board and you'll see that we'll make those X's and it's kinda like an arrow okay so what you're seeing on the arrow is this is in, you're seeing the point is coming out, the point is coming out, and then when it's going in you're seeing the tail feathers of the arrow. So that's kind of how you can remember which one's going out and which one's going in. And then if we did it along the top, along the top, if you look at your fingers, actually kind of Put your hand up, put your thumb going up, and then kind of wrap, your, curl your fingers around. You'll see that on the top, your fingers are pointing 
down and to the right. And so on the top, our magnetic field is actually going in this direction on the top. And on the bottom, it's going the opposite direction because if you looked at your fingers, they'd be pointing the opposite way. So that's one use of the right hand rule is figuring out which direction your magnetic field is. We're going to create electromagnets and they're made from coiled, a coiled wire. So in our electromagnet we have a coiled wire. So the wire is coiled around something like this and it's going to create a magnetic field that's straight. And so you would do the same thing with your right hand rule you would still take your fingers, but instead of the fingers pointing in the direction of the magnetic field, your fingers are going to follow the current. And when they follow the current, your thumb is going to point towards magnetic north. So in this case, the current is going this way. So it came in here and it's going to go out the other side. And if you see You've curled your fingers around so they're following the current and the thumb points towards magnetic north. Okay, so your thumb points towards magnetic north. Your thumb either points toward the north or if you're grabbing a wire, just the wire itself, it's going to point in the direction of the current. So that's one right hand rule that we're going to use. Taking the test is going to be so much fun because you're all going to have your hands out trying to figure it out. It's going to be fun. Right, it's the right hand rule. Right hand rule. So if you're right handed, put your pen down. Yeah, that's how I remember it. If you're left handed, you get to multitask and you're lucky. So that's enough for now for you to think about. Um, in the next one, we're going to go over some of the equations that we use in magnetism.